Welcome back to lesson four in our probability unit. Today we'll be taking an in-depth look at a two-way table where we will interpret that structure that represents a sample space. So I can use the information in a two-way table to calculate relative frequencies and to estimate probabilities. I'll know I've got it when I can use information in a two-way table to find relative frequencies and to estimate probability. Um, in case you've forgotten, a relative frequency um, is the amount of times a particular event occurs within a um, specified context. So in the case of an experiment um, or some other defined structure. And the relative frequency for the total number of outcomes helps us estimate the probability of that event occurring. So as you can see here, we have a two-way table because there are two different events, right? We have urban and rural, the home environment. Uh, we have the pet preference, a dog or cat, a uh, so data of 200 people from this particular survey. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Um, don't notice that the cat is orange. Don't notice that the dog is white with brown. Um, those are great notices, but they don't necessarily pertain to the mathematical explorations we're trying to uh, take here. So try and keep your notices and wonders specifically to the context of the data. Um, maybe generate some probabilities, um, preferences, so on and so forth. Back to our dice. Uh, okay. Um, the result of partner's A roll is represented by the values on the left side of the table. So here's the left side. The result of partner B's rolls is represented by the values on the top of the table. Press the number to roll and record the result. So we had 5, 3. For example, if a partner rolls a 3 and a partner B rolls a 5, that's very strange that that was kind of the opposite of our first roll. But we're going to do this process 50 times. 50 times. Okay, so remember, we have A is the left-hand side, B is the top side. So 5, 3, that happened one time. Okay, I'm going to roll the dice again. I got 4, 1. That happened one time. 3, 2, one time. 1, 1, snake eyes, one time. All right, we'll repeat this process 50 times. And then obviously if I hit 4-1 again, I would put 2, right, because that happened 2 times, so on and so forth. You're going to use that data to um, answer these four questions. So do the values in the table match your expectation? Okay. And there are probabilities okay, that we know about rolling die that certain rolls are much more likely than other rolls to occur, um, so on and so forth. So it really is contingent upon the data that you're able to collect. Um, but does it match your intuition? Um, based on the table, how many times did partner A roll a 5? How many times was the same number rolled? And what percentage of the rolls resulted in the same number from both partners? Percentage, not frequency. Okay, so you have to do a little bit of division here. And same number would be 1, 1, 2, 2. 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. You might want to subdivide it, both 1s, both 2s, both 3s, etc., etc. What percentage of the ro rolls resulted in partner A rolling a 3 and partner B rolling a 6? Now remember, we did 50 rolls here, so that's a little different than you know, calculating the probability for a particular event because the sample space for rolling two die is 36. So do not get the two of them twisted. Based on the table, estimate the probability that partner A will roll a two and partner B will roll a four and explain your reasoning. Okay, so this is on the data that you've, con you've acquired from the 50 rolls that you've created. In our next two-way table, we have a company in Austin, Texas and Copenhagen, Denmark. The company wants to know how employees get to work, so they take a survey of all the employees and summarize the results in a table. If an employee is selected at random, what is the probability that they work in Austin and drive a car to work? So they must work in Austin. 
and drive a car. So that would be 376. Now your first guess might, might be to say out of um, 626 or maybe out of 443. Okay, but remember it says if an employee is selected at random, right? So all employees would be 1,103. And they give us a decimal value here of 0.34, which would be 34%. The of keeps happening. So um, this amount shall suffice. Make sure you are uh, attending to precision as you read here. So once again, if an employee is selected at random, what is the probability that they work in Copenhagen and ride a bike to work? And lastly, what is the probability that they take public transit to work? Hint, hint. No location was specified, so factor that into your uh, calculations. Now these two are phrased slightly differently, so make sure you are treading lightly, but if an employee from Copenhagen is selected at random, what is the probability that they write a bike to work? If an employee who takes public transit to work is selected at random, what is the probability that they work in Austin? And how are these last two questions different from the verse three? Um, do not think of it as something that is textbook obvious. Um, if it is something that you are not uh, confident about, that's totally okay, but try to generate some type of thought. So we have another pretty extensive table. School district is interested in how students get to school, so they survey them to see how they get to school and separate the numbers by grade level. The results of the survey are summarized in the table. This is a huge school district, 12,000 students. Uh, if a high school student is selected at random, what is the probability that they are in grade 9 and ride the bus to school? So once again, high school student selected at random, so that's 12,681 of them. Uh, must be in grade 9 and ride the bus, 3,196. So that's about a 25% uh, probability. And we'll handle those subsequent questions. And using the same data, but a little bit of a twist. On the precursor, right? If a grade 10 student is selected at random, if a grade 12 student is selected at random, and if a student who rides the bus to school is selected at random, okay. So once again, we will we would not be using the total value here because the total represents the total population, but they're not asking for you to look at the total population. They're asking to look at for you to look at a, a stratified or contextual, context specific uh, population. <clears throat> And that'll do it for this um, lesson. Uh, very statistics uh, founded, but statistics and property go hand in hand. So here's your lesson for summary, and we'll pause at the enhancement opportunities.